Hello and welcome to my quick update on Helium 1.40 which will be coming out shortly. Now these additions and changes to the chord track are quite important so I wanted to do a video just to let you know what's coming. Now over the last week or so we've introduced a new chord track feature and we've also uh, made Helium compatible with tone packets. Now we've had significant development uh, since then and uh, I want to show you that today and demonstrate some of the new features we've added since the last update. So to actually get to the chord lane you need to press this controller button at the bottom here. Long press where it says velocity and pick chord track. Now if you've played with the chord track before you'll immediately notice that something's changed and you'll notice here it says global and not the chord name and when we click on that we get to be able to choose uh, which chord track to look at now we now have local chord tracks and global chord tracks now if we long press the track button up here we get to the track config and you'll notice in here there is very little other than the channel and bus number now if we click back down there where it says global you'll notice there was a third option there and that option allows us to turn on and off the chord track globally and when we do that and we go back to the chord options by long pressing you will notice there are extra items within this toolbar now now the first option allows us to turn on the chord track and specify a anticipation value while the second one tells us whether we want to uh, follow the global chord track or the local chord track and the last option allows us to specify whether we send MIDI note on offs or tone packets now if you haven't seen my video on tone packets I suggest you go watch that now this is a substantial upgrade from what we had before because we had only had a global chord track before and we were only allowed to send no on and off data on a per track basis now if we head off to the chord mode options in the main menu uh, you'll notice that things have slightly changed in here not a lot though we still can turn on and off the global chord track support which toggles this value down there in the bottom right uh, and this menu has actually changed slightly because we've got extra options in there now now the first three options are for the currently selected track which is track one and these are just a mirror image of what we've just seen on the track configuration toolbar by long pressing the track button. The first option sets the anticipation just like before. Uh, the second option changes uh, which uh, message type we're sending. And the third option, the follow option, tells us which chord track we're following. And the last option allows the uh, global chord track to send tone packets on the control out port which is what we used in previous examples so the advantage here is things are much more flexible and we're not having all instruments following the same old chord track so we can start and stop chords at will on a track by track basis now in previous versions whenever we want to add a chord to the chord track we've clicked down here and selected the chord type but obviously that's changed now uh, so the best way to do it is just to tap hold and drag and then long press on the chord to change the uh, root note and chord type here. So if you want a C minor chord instead of a major you just click here and pick the relevant option. Now you can pick one of the predetermined chord types and there's a lot of them or you can even start adding additional notes. Notice that now that chord types change from uh, chord uh, to cluster and the word modified has been added to the end of the chord type now another new addition that I want to point out is this little drop down arrow at the top here which expands the dialog to reveal this controller 1 and controller 2 buttons now I'm going to go over these uh, in more detail later in the video so enough theory uh, let's give you an example of how uh, the local and global chord tracks differ and uh, to do this I'm going to kick off with this uh, copy of AUM I've got loaded here 
and a copy of Rings FX on the first audio channel. Now if we look at the settings for that, we're currently checking our input from Helium's port 1 and not the control out port that we previously used. Now if I open Helium, you'll see I've already added some chords to the global chord track. And if we look at the track uh, selector, you'll see that the two little asterisks next to track 1 and track 2, meaning they generate sound. Now if I long press on the track button, we get the, uh, the track properties for track 1. And notice that this uh, track is following the global chord track. Also note we're sending tone packets to the bus uh, here. Uh, in this case, we're on bus 1, which is equivalent to port 1. So essentially track 1 is going to use the global chord track to produce chords and send tone packets out to port 1. So let's take a listen. So as you could hear there, the chord track was uh, sent to Rings Effect no problem. Now if I change this playback to use the local uh, chord track and play that back, you will notice nothing plays because if we switch to the local chord track for this uh, track one, you'll see that there's nothing there. And if we open up the track selector, you'll see that the little asterisk next to track 1 has gone because it knows nothing's going to be played. So let's do a little experiment here. I'm going to switch back to the global chord track. And just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to select uh, this set of chords by just dragging with the selection tool active. Click on the clipboard and copy that set of chords into the clipboard. Move back to the local track, put the ruler at position 2 and paste. Now what I want to do is change it. So I'm going to click on... I'm going to remove every other chord from this sequence. So I can do that just by double clicking on every other chord. Now we have a local chord track which is different from the global one. So let's play that back. So as you can imagine, being able to use a local chord track rather than a global one really opens up the scope of this uh, feature. And unlike with the previous version, you can now send tone packets as well as note on off to uh, individual ports. Now, there might be times when we want lots of instruments to follow a single global chord track. So let's switch to uh, the global chord track and uh, I take a look at this and what I'm going to do I'm going to go into uh, settings and I'm going to make sure that the uh, the core track is being sent to control out the global core track and it is it's currently turned on now I'm going to enable a copy of copperhead which I have uh, pre-prepared with a nice arpeggiator in it and I'm going to make sure that this is Technics MIDI input from Helium's control output because that's where uh, we asked that global track to play. So now Copperhead is following the global track and track 1 is output into port 1 following its local track. So now we've learned how to use both the global and local chord tracks, I want to take a look at something a little bit different. I want to add an extra track and I want this to be a drum track. So the first thing we're going to do is switch to track 2, which is currently empty, and change the chord track to local. Now let's go have a look. I already have a copy of Digistics here and Digistix, I've already configured a couple of patterns in this. 
Pattern one is simple four on the floor bass drum and the uh, second pattern is a little bit more elaborate but uh, the fact is I've got two patterns here now before I forget let's set the uh, port up make sure we're looking at the right port from helium and this time we're going to go to port 2 now if we return back to helium and take a look at track 2 properties by long pressing the track button you can see we're sending to bus 2 or port 2 we can also see that we're using a local chord track so let's see what happens when I start transport running now notice Digistic starts at beat 1 and the rest starts at beat 2 so what we want is a way to start and stop Digistics and uh, the best way to do that is to add a chord and then in the chord properties change the chord type from chord to controllers only now you may have noticed the two buttons at the bottom of this dialog controller 1 and controller 2 now in the case of Digistics I can send a controller 2 of 0 to stop it playing so if I start the transport we should hear nothing we could hear Digistics was silent but at bar 2 we want to start that playing so I'm going to duplicate that uh, controllers chord and I'm going to change that uh, second controller parameter to 1 Now I want to step it up a notch at bar 6 and uh, change pattern and the way we do that is to add another controllers only chord and uh, set the controller 1 this time to number 1 which is pattern 2. So as you can see we can piggyback these chord definitions and add additional controllers which is specific to my apps at the minute but uh, in uh, Digistics you saw there we can start and stop the transport or change pattern in Strummer for instance we can change the strum style and I plan on adding these to other apps uh, over time so let's just quickly add a copy of Strummer to the mix now I have a copy of Strummer here which I can engage and as long as I'm following the control out uh, it should just work when I press play but if I want a little bit more flexibility the best thing to do is not follow the chord track and have a local track so I'm going to switch to track 3 within Helium and then just to save time I'm going to go back to the global track and I'm going to copy and paste uh, these uh, uh, chords uh, from here and paste into track 3's uh, local chord group so copy those there uh, switch to uh, the local chord track and position the cursor at position 2 and paste now because we can send controllers to strummer to change strum pattern uh, I want to start by uh, setting the first chord to select uh, strum pattern 0 or that would be an arpeggio in this case uh, so we can change the controller 1 to 0 which is the first strum pattern and then on the fifth chord I'm going to select that and change the controller 1 to a 1 which is the second strum pattern now one important thing is to make sure that strummer is no longer taking its output from control out but uh, port 3 instead 
and also check that track 3 is output into port 3 which it is and it's also uh, using the global track so we need to change that to local okay now everything's set up we can switch back to strummer and uh, watch the uh, the strumming changes in action To round off this video I want to go over a couple of uh, really nice quality of life features I've added to Helium uh, to help out with song construction. Now as most of you already know uh, Helium ships with uh, tens of thousands of mid pre-made MIDI chords and MIDI progressions and uh, these have always been available to you in the uh, clips folder of the media bay and uh, we've always been able to drag and drop these clips uh, into the editor either uh, chord by chord or in complete progressions and uh, that's been a very useful feature that people have found uh, extremely useful but as of version 1.40 we can now drag it directly into the chord track itself so uh, not only can we uh, drag and drop individual chords uh, but we can also drag and drop chord sequences uh, this is very useful for people that either uh, don't know anything about chord sequences or chord progressions and uh, it's also useful for uh, experimenting and uh, uh, making use of this chord library now another useful feature I have had it added is the ability to take actual MIDI notes that you've entered within the main editor and uh, convert those into a chord track. So as you can see here I have a bunch of notes which uh, I've imported uh, by drag and drop but if I select or range a group of these chords and then press and hold on the add chord button there's a new item here that converts the chords directly from the uh, selected notes uh, and replaces them with uh, chords in the chord track and uh, I think this is great for anyone with an existing chord sequence that wants to uh, uh, use the chord track or convert what they've already got any chords that uh, the conversion doesn't understand will get turned into note clusters rather than chords as you can see here now as long as you've used uh, consistent and legal chords and they are part of the chord library it will convert them just fine now as you can see the original notes are deleted as part of this process so you don't end up with double notes but let me just undo that and get some uh, notes back again uh, the last feature I want to show you is, many of you will already know about this, uh, but if we um, select a set of chords, uh, click and hold on the clipboard button, we can physically drag out of that clipboard button and uh, I can drag and drop uh, the selection anywhere I like within that timeline. Now this does not replace the original notes and we can drag and drop anywhere on the timeline using this method. So hopefully that covered all the essential uh, upgrade information you need and uh, gives you an idea of what's changed. Uh, so uh, this version 1.40 will be out soon, it's just in final test. So don't forget to thumb up the video, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.